Hey everyone, Dan Saavedra here from Merger Data, and we are on day 26 of the 90-day YouTube sprint on Signal Analytics, and we are going into what I believe is part four of lead scores. It's our last video on lead scores. We're going to go into the last two examples, detailed examples, of different types of lead scores. These are our favorite ones. These are the ones that we use most often, so this video will be better than the last one. At least I hope so. At least I think so. We'll see how it goes. And if you've been watching this before, if you've been through the other videos, I start with who am I, but I'm going to change it up a little bit on this video, on the next video as well. And I'm going to have some evidence in here, some, some actual results so you can see how the work actually drives results for clients. I got to warm up my voice box. I haven't been talking very smooth today, but that's okay. Who am I? I'm Dan Saavedra. I run Merger Data, a signal analytics firm. Basically, we find the data points that show you whether or not a prospect is going to become a customer or whether you should downsell or whatever, put them in some sequence to close them out. And you use that data to make more money, be more efficient. I've been working in data for 12 years. But the important part is this screenshot below, which is from a client, it's real client data, and obviously anonymized, so you can't tell who it is. But this is the result of signal analytics. This is the result of some of the lead scores that we're going to be talking about today. And in the graph, you can see two different screenshots. One on the left-hand side is the count of deals created over time. You can see that in Q1 of 2023 is when we launched, and that's when we deployed the signal analytics solution into their business. You can see that there weren't many more created deals that quarter, and that's okay. Because when we look at Signal analytics deployed versus revenue, which is on the right-hand side. We see that in January, 2023, they had 580,000 a month in revenue. And then once you enter Q2 there, that it starts climbing really quickly while the deals are going down. So they're getting less created deals, but their revenue is climbing consistently. And so you can see here that sales and marketing is actually getting way more efficient. They don't have to hire any more people. They can actually cut the team a little bit because you're getting better fit clients in the door, you're closing more. And so this is the result of signal analytics. It's not just necessarily a growth in all opportunities, it might be, but it can be a growth in qualified opportunities, leading to more revenue, leading to more efficient sales and marketing processes. So that's who I am, that's the results. But again, I don't know why I accidentally put that slide in there twice. Who this is for, same as the other lead score videos that we've done, Leadership plus the team in the trio, sales, marketing, rev ops, and then IT. We need leadership in there for the strategic guidance on which scores should be used, how that should drive action. We need the team to implement them and look at the data. And then we need IT to make sure that we are getting all that data into the CRM accurately. And so why you should care. This is the same as the video before. You get our accurate lead scores lead to efficient teams, which means better close rates and efficient retargeting campaigns. So that's sales for better close rate marketing for efficient retargeting campaigns. We have full cycle, it's full cycle and pipeline applicability, which means there's more money. So we can look at the entire customer journey with lead scores. We can put them at different points in the life cycle and in the pipeline to make sure that we know what's going on. It's an aggregate signal. It tells you just a quick snapshot of the likelihood of someone to close. And then three is better or more accurate projection. So you get more budget and you get more results. If you can show and walk back with data, why certain cohorts perform better, why certain campaigns and messaging perform better, how you can leverage that data to put more effort into a specific area, grow your revenue, grow your opportunities for the business and stop doing things that don't matter. So that's why you should care about this. So let's get into the actual examples themselves. So example three, cause we did one and two on the, the last video would be one score with some categories. It can be weighted or unweighted. This is pretty much unweighted because it's 50-50. If it was weighted, you could put in 75% versus 25%, and that's actually what we're gonna do for our example here. And so they don't have to have each and every category lead scores. We've gone over this a couple of videos ago. Sometimes less is more. So combining two categories of data points to make a lead score can be more powerful than doing all four categories. And so using the example from before, all we're going to do is, and before last video, all we're going to do is cross out two of these categories of scores and save the others. 
So we crossed out insight score and time score here. So this score would be a behavior plus a position score put together. And so we ignore the insights, we ignore the time, we focus on what they're doing, pricing page visit, form submission, multiple account website visits. And we make sure that we're categorizing that based off of how many of those actions they've taken in the last seven days. They've taken all of them. You can do a one through five, like we talked about in the, in the previous video, one through five, you do instead of some other number scale because you have a neutral position in the middle. And then the next, next example, I'm going to show a one through four scale instead. But this one, one five is all in the last seven days. And then we just go down, like we talked about in the last video. If they haven't been doing all those actions in the last seven days, then it's not as high of a score. Insight we're ignoring, time we're ignoring. So this is a position and behavior only. There's reasons for that. This is more of a sales focused score to see exactly what's going on with the prospect, how they're interacting with assets, what that means in terms of your likelihood to close and what to focus on. Position score is the other portion. So life cycle stage plus lead stage plus deal stage. So we'd combine all of those. If they were an existing customer and they're in the negotiation deal stage, then they would be a five. If they're a new contact, the lead status lead stage is meeting held. And then the deal stage is scoping. Maybe it's a three. And this is the same example we used before. We're just crossing out those, those two above. And so since this is a 50, 50 score, we would just add up these numbers, right? So if we have a three and we have a four, then we would get seven and we can determine if we want a seven or above to be qualified, if we want a six or above to be qualified, and then we would go off of that. And that would be an example of this lead score. Now that one's better than the last two we discussed, but this next one is actually my true favorite. The one we use most with clients. It gives you a lot of flexibility, but we're going to have to use a diagram to discuss it, which is why you see these two tabs up here. So this one is different scores that are weighted and have auto qualification or auto disqualification. So in this example, we're only using dimensional categories for scores, no event based. So we're not doing some fluid calculation based off of if they open an email three more times and we're gonna add more points to their score. We're not doing that here. This is just static data that we're collecting. And then we're just going to make the score off that. So we're using position and we're using insight in this and we're going to weight this. So 75% of the score is based off the insight category. 25% is based off of the position category. And then we're gonna do that calculation. Qualification would be if the total is a five or above, we're doing one through four for this one. So we're not allowing neutral to be an option. It either has to be a bad or it has to be very bad, bad, good, or very good categorization, one through four, no neutral. So it forces a decision here. And then auto disqualification, if an insight score or position score is a one, then we're auto disqualifying because one of those categories being a one indicates bad fit. Don't do it. And then auto qualification of contact life cycle stage equals five. This should be a four. I mistyped it, but, but this would be a four. If let's say you have actually, we're going to do it in the example. So I won't say that yet, but let's jump into the actual flow chart of how this works. Cause it's a little bit blurry. And so we're going to do this position score here. This would, or this is actually a sales urgency score. So this would be a sales urgency score based off of position and insight like we just talked about. And we'll start on the left-hand side here for the position. And so we're going to look first, is the position score equal to four? And we're going to define four as when the life cycle stage equals a customer. So if they're a customer, they get priority. I don't care about the fit, but they're going to get priority. This is just an example. You might be different. But if we have someone, even if they're a completely different discipline and they're reaching out about an opportunity, we're going to talk to them. And so they go down this green branch. Yes, there are four and they're qualified. And so then we have our actions here, sales tasks, automations, actions from the sales team. This is exactly what we're talking about when we're talking about the signal constructor tool, the free resource link in the description. You can build these exact types of triggers 
based off of specific criteria. And so we would have this to define in our signal constructor tool. But let's say they had a no, it's not a four, it's a three for some reason. Then we go down, is position score equal one, right? And then underneath that, we had a workflow, workflow or an automatic calculation based off of a property. It doesn't matter how you do it, but if the position score is one, it means that they've been in the stage for or more than 14 days. The deal has been in the stage for more than, more than 14 days. This means that it's idle, it's dead, right? And so if that's a yes, we're following this red line and they're disqualified, right? Maybe, maybe we just, we mark this automatically as closed. Maybe you put a little step in here and it's not automatically disqualified, but instead you do one last ditch effort to understand where the deal's at and then you close it if nothing changes, right? So there's ways you can go about this. We're just gonna, for an example purpose, stick to the, the very simple rules. But let's say that insight score is not one. So I'm gonna type the no in there. Then we go down to this calculation property and we'll get to that after. We're gonna go back up to the other score, the insight score. Is the insight score equal to one? So here we would say if the insight score, the insight score is equal to one, if the industry equals real estate or revenue is less than $500,000 a year, we're not gonna work with them, doesn't matter. So in this insight score, we're actually calculating it either in a separate workflow or in a separate property, where we're taking multiple data points and aggregating it into this insight score, right? And so same thing, if they have a one, we're going to disqualify. But if they don't have a one, then we're going directly to this calculation. It's the weighted score 0.75 times the insight score plus 0.25 times the position score And then if they end up being a three or higher, then they're qualified. If they're less than a three, then they're disqualified. Remember we're weighting this, so we're not just adding them together. So we're multiplying it first. Let's say it's a four insight score. That would be times 0.75 is a three. Then let's say the position score is a four. So it's a one. So three plus one equals four, three or higher. We're good. Less than three, it'd be disqualified. Talked about qualified, you want the automations in there, you want everything else. The disqualified, we want to send a down sell sequence, either something something that disqualifies them, right? It doesn't have to be like, hey, go away. It can be something like, you're not a good fit, come back later, here's a down sell offer, ask for a referral, whatever you figure out to work. We're not experts in that area. You can see the data behind what you do. This is part of signals, right? We, we look at the data associated with it, but we don't make the suggestions off of a process standpoint just because we're not sales experts, right? And so you can look at the data, you can see what that lead score, what's going on. That's one example here of type of score where we're taking different scores that are weighted and have auto qualification or auto disqualification. Now, I've got a bonus example because there's a subset of this that we also like using. And it's a little bit simpler a little bit more cut and dry, but it's two scores in the same category, unweighted. A lot of times this is insight categories, the insight category, because it's data that you're collecting directly from the prospect or it's fit basic fit data, which is like demographics, firmographics, psychographics, whatever it might be. And so we have here this simple example, which we'll go to the diagram for as well. Insight score one through four for revenue ranges, one through four through for position level. Qualification is if the total score is a five or above, when you add them together, there's no weighting. So it'd be three plus four, four plus four, one plus two, whatever that is. Auto disqualification is if insight score is a one in either score. So maybe we don't care if we add them up and it's a one and a four and we get a five. If one of the insight scores is a one, then we disqualify. And then the opposite too, let's say for the revenue range insight score, it's a four, then we're automatically qualifying because they're a certain size. We know they're gonna be a good fit. We'll work with the position, whatever it may be. Now this is also, a, this is a subset because you can put it into the insight score itself here before you weight it, right? So you can have multiple layers. Like you can have this insight score that then combines with the position score. So, if we go to the diagram here, 
we have the two scores split out. On the left-hand side, we have the insight score based off the position, and it's the same thing. Is the insight score equal to one? For this, we're, defin we're defining insight score equals one when position is independent contributor. Now, I'd caution with this example to not just disqualify and ignore people who are not the correct level. A lot of times, you can utilize that relationship to work your way up the ladder and get to people who actually make decisions. Right. So don't just automatically push them to the side. I'd always say to nurture them somehow because it can lead to the opportunities down the road. It's very short sighted to just push those people away. So we have the same flow. If it's a one, yes, goes to disqualified. If it's a no, we go to the insight score plus the insight score. So position plus revenue scores put together. If we're looking at the revenue ranges, is the insight score equal to one? Same criteria. For us, insight score equals one when revenue is below 500,000 a year or above 1 billion a year. So it doesn't have to be just one comparison. If they're over a billion dollars a year, bad fit for us. We've worked with clients like that in the past. The results, like we just can't get the same results. Just the nature of doing things, right? You're not gonna be a fit for everyone. And so this is an automatic disqualification for us. Let's say it's not a one. So is it a four? If it's automatically a four, then it's qualified, right? So for us, insight score equals four when revenue is between three to 10 million a year. The reason for that is because when we work with businesses in that size, we see the best results. Like we have the data to prove it. We know that we're going to be able to grow their revenue by X amount over X period of time. If you follow these exact steps, if you're not in that range, you can still get results, but it takes a little bit more qualification from our end to make sure that there are at least subsets of your revenue that could benefit from the services we provide, right? So four would mean automatic qualification, even if the position isn't correct, just because we want to nurture that relationship as best as possible, right? And we can combine this also with industry and other things like that. So you can make, every, you can put whatever you want into these insight scores. It just has to make sure to tie, tie back to actual results. And then we just add these up and then if it's a five or higher, we go qualified. If it's a four or lower, disqualified. Same thing that we talked about before, automations on both ends. And that's pretty much it for our examples of lead scores. If you've liked this, take an action, like, comment, share in a company chat. We've been seeing you do that. We appreciate you doing that. It helps us grow and get the word out to more people about the types of services that we offer and how we can help clients get the results that they're looking for with Signal Analytics. Added one in here, download the B2B signal constructor tool. It's the other action. We've had great feedback on it. People love it. If you don't like it, tell us so we can make changes to it or just say too bad. But yeah, download that tool. It's a great resource, it's free. Next video is we're gonna talk about increased close rates by being faster, but not too fast. There's a nuance here. We have the data to prove it. We're gonna look into it in the next video. Once again, get the free signal constructor tool, sign up at the link in the bio. If you liked what you heard and you would like to see the same results of growing your revenue over the next six months without having to have more deals in your pipeline, book a call with our team. We'll chat. We'll have a good time. I'm Dan Spader. Thanks for watching. Talk to you next time.